you cannot uh, do this it depends on your effective annual rate that is the rate which you will be finding out so what we have to do is we have to find out effective annual rate for this product because the rates are different the periodic the compounding periods are different so we have to find out effective annual rate if you are able to find out effective annual rate the higher one we will be investing okay so that means the next topic we will cover is how to find out the effective annual rate so how do you find out the effective annual rate how you will compute effective annual rate what is the uh, process what is the method that you will follow okay now going back to the previous one which we had discussed we got some 112 point something something we did minus 100 divided by 100 and we got our effective annual rate right now if you apply the same concept over here if you see what is this amount can I say that this is your future value? What is this? This is your present value. This is also your present value. So effective annual rate, if you are doing future value, but please note that you have to find out for one year. Okay. What is in one year how much you get? Future value minus present value by present value. Is this clear? Now what is the formula for future value we saw? It was 1 plus i by y to the power n into sorry PV into 1 plus i by y to the power n. Okay. So for one year what we say is this is the number of period in one year. So can I say future value is equal to present value into 1 plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year can I say this future value equal to p present value 1 plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year in a case wherein I am saying that I am investing money for only one year because I want effective annual rate computation so I want money to be invested only for one year that is why I am putting over here one year otherwise the actual formula is this right so now let's put this value of FB so it will be PV 1 plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year minus present value divided by present value please note guys like these derivations are not uh, required in the examination why I am doing this derivation is you understand the basic so you understand how it has come so that means do not rely on the formulas that is being given in books etc Okay. So you know the basics. So anytime you forget the formula, you will be able to derive it. Okay. Now what happens is, can I take this PV common and cancel it off? So if I cancel the PV, what will remain? So can I say that this will be your effective annual rate? So if this is your effective annual rate, you will cancel off the PV. PV, PV, PV will get cancelled. Here one will remain. So what is the effective annual rate formula? 1 plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year minus 1 right so this is our formula for effective annual rate okay now the question is very good question Ashish like what he is saying is you have rate is what you are saying is rate is 10 percent per annum are you saying this Responding in two years. Please note that you have given the rate is 10% per annum. That means in the one year rate is still 10% per annum. Okay. And it is compounding for two years. So what if you see the rate is 10% per annum. So you will get 10%. So you invest 100 rupees. You get 10%. Okay. But the money you will get is 110. But over here we are not saying that you are compounding in every year the compounding period is two years so what will happen is you will do you have invested amount 100 and it will first become for two years it will become 120 right getting this idea it will become 120 again it will get compounded every two years so what I will do is rather than taking 10 percent per annum and compounded two years I will take the rate is 20 percent for two years 
is this clear i will take rate is 20% for 2 years and i will say that if i invest 100 i will get in 2 years how much 120 now i want to replace this situation with this i am investing 100 i am getting 120 okay that means i want to have a effective annual rate because effective annual rate is like after one year you will get how much if you are compounding with effective annual rate you have invested 100 you will be getting 1 plus effective annual rate after one year right and again whatever the money you have got you will again multiply with your effective annual rate and you will get how much money can I write 120 100 rupees you got you will compound at 1 plus effective annual rate whatever you have got you will again compound it at 1 plus effective annual rate you will get 120 right so what I can write is your 1 plus effective annual rate whole square is can I write 1.2 so your 1 plus effective annual rate will become how much can I say it will become root of 1.2 your effective annual rate will become root of 1.2 minus 1 okay if you compute this root of 1.2 minus 1 it will be lesser than 10% which is what we will see because you are compounding your money 100 is becoming 120 after 2 years so effectively rate will be lesser than this that means rate was 10% per annum your compounding period is 2 years okay what is the effective annual rate so for this what we will say is like if it is compounding every 2 years we will take this scenario you have invested 100 after two years you got 120 right? so your amount has become 120 but what we are interested in finding out is effective annual rate so what we will assume is assume that the same amount 100 rupees will become 120 at what rate so assume at effective annual rate so we'll say 100 into 1 plus effective annual rate into 1 plus effective annual rate at the end it will become 120 because 100 multiplied by 1 plus r multiplied by 1 plus r will become equal to 120 and you will solve this you will get the effective annual rate okay what we say is when the compounding when the compounding frequency is greater than annual then your effective annual rate will be lower than the stated rate when your frequency of compounding is less than the annual that is you are having more that means then effective annual rate will be greater than the stated rate okay. now going back to the previous question okay. a b two products 10 percent compounded quarterly 9.9 percent .9 or let's take as 9.85 percent compounded monthly which is better where you will invest Okay. so give me the value of effective annual rate for A as well as B the formula for effective annual rate will be 1 plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year minus 1 okay. what we have is the problem uh, if you see over here we have uh, okay. The effective annual rate formula is given as okay, it is effective annual rate is equal to one plus periodic rate to the power number of period in one year minus one. Okay, so this is what we have. So let's solve this. So what is the peri <coughs> periodic rate in the first case? Ten divided by four. Sorry. So this is a backspace. So this back is a backspace. I have done a mistake. I want to eliminate that. So this is a backspace. I will put 4 equal to so this is 2.5 10 divided by 4 now <clears throat> you want to compute the percentage there is one more shortcut over here this is a percentage so if I do this press this percentage it will give me the, the percentage form what I will do is only plus 1 okay. so that means it gives me 1 plus periodic rate to the power how much I will do quarterly there are 4 quarters so y to the power x 4 
minus 1 right so in the first and if you want to get in the percentage you will do into 100 right so the 10.3813 right? so this is the percentage you got for the investment a okay okay so this is the 10.38 is a uh, you got now there is one more function because you might here like you are remembering 10.38 okay you can write in your paper but why you want to waste your time okay so your calculator is coming up with some functions okay to store the values so if you want to store this value if you see there is a uh, button which is called a store okay store means store okay now once you press this button store okay you can store this value in all of this so if i press store and press zero that means your button the number will be stored in zero okay if i press store and press eight your number will get stored in eight okay let me try to show you how its storing will get done so i press store and i press zero okay and then i will cancel this okay if i press recall and press zero that number will come getting the idea so store will store the values recall will recall the values okay okay i will i will uh, i will uh, solve it again what you have is you have 10.38 coming let's see how it's come okay. what you have is periodic rate is first 10 is the stated rate divided by 4 is the periodic rate 2.5 percent okay now what you have is you will divide it by 100 so you can divide this by 100 and you get the but you have to put lots of button right what I have is I can directly get that so you have 2.5 you want to find out what is a percentage just press this per button percentage it will give you the same you don't have to divide by 100 okay. so you got this 0 0.025 press plus 1 you get 1.025 okay what you have is number of periodic rate you have to do the power so this is a button we saw y to the power x y to the power x 4 it will give me 1.025 to the power 4 minus 1 will give me 10.38 so it is 0 0.1038 if you multiply with 100 you will get 10.38 and here we have stored it in 0 I can store it in 9 also let's say I have stored it in 9 okay now if I want I can recall it from 9 or here I want I can recall it from zero wherever like it's no I have just shown that you can store in many places so you have total of 10 registers for storing 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 10 values in total you can store